developing. It is noon in Kiev. I'm Monita Rajpal. You're watching CNN Newsroom live from Hong Kong. Also ahead, a CNN exclusive. But first, Ukraine's acting president says a referendum held in parts of the East was a farce and had no legal basis. We are waiting to hear the final results of this vote, which took place in two regions, Donetsk and Luhansk. Voters were asked to say yes or no to self-rule in their regions. One of the ballot organizers in Donetsk says preliminary results show more than 89% voted yes against 10% voting no. One big controversy has been the question of voting irregularity. A CNN crew saw several people voting twice at one polling station. There was also a report of a video showing three men arrested near Slavyansk with boxes of yes ballots in their car. The poll organizers in Donetsk are denying there was any fraud. Atika Schubert has that side of the story. Most elections are pretty simple. One person, one them vote. A verifiable, accurate representation of the will of the people here? Probably not. But what we do know is the undeniable amount of people that have come out here to vote today. And what comes Atika Schubert reporting there. Now, Russia says it respects the outcome of this referendum and is calling for results to be implemented peacefully. Well, let's take you straight now to CNN's uh, Matthew Chance, who joins us now live from Moscow with more on that. Matthew? Manita, thanks very much. Well, it's uh, perhaps unsurprising that, that Moscow has come out in opposition. All right, Matthew, to... thank you for that. Matthew Chance there, live for us from Moscow. Nigeria says more international help is on its way to step up the search for its missing schoolgirls. The president's office says Israel is sending a team of counterterrorism experts. Specialists from the U.S., Britain, France, and China are already there. The Nigerian government is facing continuing protests Canada, over its Canada, Azana, response. Azana, from Borno Central District joins us now on the phone uh, with more on this. Senator, uh, first of all, can you hear me? Yeah, I do. Okay, sir, thank you very much for uh, being with us here on the show. Give us an update as to how much progress the Nigerian government has made in the search for these girls. Um, I, I, I can say zero for now. Because since, uh, the well, other Senator, we thank you very much uh, for giving us your thoughts uh, on this increasingly worrying situation. We're looking at a, a, a month now uh, where these girls have been uh, taken and there's still no word on where they are. Senator Ahmed Zana there uh, from Borno Central District in Nigeria. Now, CNN, as we were just saying, is the first international news organization to make this dangerous trek to Chibok. That's the village uh, that, where they were taken from. Nema Albager and her crew Tell us the trip from Abuja should have taken eight to ten hours. I'm sorry. This is the first in a series of exclusive reports Nema has filed, and of course, we'll bring you more this week on CNN. Nema is in Abuja, Nigeria, and she joins us now. Nema, some, uh, it's, it's heartbreaking to hear them talk about it, uh, and perhaps one of the most harrowing things to hear is them describe these men coming in and saying it was like they were on a shopping trip. Absolutely, Manita. This was extraordinarily well planned, well executed, unbelievably Incredible. brazen. All right, great work there, Nema. Thank you so much for that. Nema Albagir reporting because they're live from Abuja. And of course, do stay with CNN as we'll continue to bring more of her exclusive interviews with these very, very brave girls who managed to escape. You are watching CNN Newsroom live from Hong Kong. Amid the A 700 day siege in the Syrian city of Homs is now over. Rebel groups have left, and tens of thousands of the city's residents are now going back home. Home. CNN's Fred Pleitkin is, in the, is the first Western journalist there, and as he shows us in this exclusive report, he's finding a sense of hope among those returning. In the ruins of the old town of Homs. You are watching CNN Newsroom, live from Hong Kong. I think I told a lot about A key defense witness in Oscar Pistorius' murder trial has been facing a sharp cross-examination from the prosecution. Ballistics expert Tom Woolmerns was questioned by lawyer Harry Nell, who challenged him on the version uh, he called gave. also a psychiatrist to give evidence. CNN's legal analyst uh, Kelly Phelps is outside the courthouse in Pretoria. Uh, Kelly, when we listen to some of the statements from uh, this uh, uh, psychiatrist, it's interesting what they, uh, what they, or how they described. Uh, 
um, uh, Oscar Pistorius and how he was raised by his mother, who pretty much uh, taught uh, her children to be fearful of their external environment. Absolutely. This is the much anticipated key, wit uh, key witness right. for the defense. Kelly, thank you very much. As always, Kelly Phelps, their life for uh, from Pretoria. You are watching CNN Newsroom, live from Hong Kong. I'm Anita Rajpal. Thank you for joining us. Do stay with us right here on CNN.